Icelandic has gotten here. And uh, I'm going to take him out on trail. We didn't prepare him in the arena because we want to see how it goes. So this is going to be his first time that he's gone out on our trails. He just arrived yesterday. I took him down the road a little bit. He saw some goats. He did pretty well because I don't think he's seen goats before. And uh, he does walk faster than I would have expected for what they're calling a beginner horse. So we'll see. And he's more, he, you know, went slower out on the road versus the arena. He was a little faster, so that needs some work. But a lot of people don't ride them in the arena, so they're not used to it. Uh, they said, the owners who have him now, that he'll walk out a little bit and then he'll settle and then he goes slower. So he may go slower than this, we'll see. Uh, but, you know, if you're nervous, then when they walk out, that sometimes makes you more nervous. So that's not always a good thing. So, again, it's always about finding the right match. So we're going to practice a little bit of our leg yielding. Because a lot of them don't know this that well. So there he sped up a little bit. Let's we'll see. And again, I don't know how much they rode him alone, but he did walk right out. So this is where there's kind of bad footing. The sprinklers are on. He's doing pretty good with that so far. So this is where it's a good test if they're how sure-footed they are, how good they are with their feet. Uh, the feet were not done, so they are long at the moment. So they'll be done this week. Now we're turning away from home. That was the tarp. It's not blowing today, but I'm sure the scarecrows will be moving up here. So pretty good. So I'm going to make them walk go out a little bit faster. Now even though I said he walks out fast, again he has a short stride. So it might feel fast, but it actually really isn't. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You get a horse with a short stride and it feels like it's very fast because its legs are moving a lot. And then you get on a walking horse and feel like it's not moving and you're covering like three times as much ground. Oh, the scarecrow fell down. At least one of them did. Okay. But so far he's not caring about that stuff. His gait is smooth. This, this is, you know, like flat walk. And the scarecrow is going to pop up around this tree. so far. There it is blowing. So good with that. There's a little water on the ground from the sprinkler so he just veered around it. Again this is the test ride. This isn't so much fixing stuff today. It's just to see what he is to start. He's climbing well. Go up the step ups. Did good with those so, so far. Very good. He's got uh, good endurance. So again, lots of horses look up to the right. He didn't look at all. He just went right to work. Going right up these steps like a trooper. Okay, so he trucked up that hill really well. He definitely could carry somebody big. He's picking his way. But see, I'm not pushing him now. This is the speed he's going for the moment. Which is fun. Now we're going to go through the narrow part. He's paying attention. He put his head down some. He seems to know his trail job. Now he is slowing down. So now, now I could let go more. Let's go this way. And uh, we'll see how slow he gets. So again, I like to take them out forward so they get rid of some energy. Some I have to push, some I don't have to push. And this guy I did not have to push, but I was not half halting or hanging on him or anything to keep him from going faster than that. That was just his natural speed. Okay. 
but so far, at least coming out on this trail, very brave. So these are the things that scare all the horses, the feather, whatever. Those people who know plants are probably like, yeah, you're an idiot. You should figure out what those are. They told me, I just don't remember. Okay, now he's going pretty slow. Yeah. So, and that's what the owners who had him now said. They said he, he kind of moves out and then he'll uh, back off and slow down. Okay. Now, now he's getting really slow. So now I'm going to put a little leg on him to push Because remember, you want to go out forward, come back slow. So I want to test him, but I also want to move a little bit. It also helps me to see, you know, what, are they really out of breath when I get up to the end or not, so I can tell their condition better. Icelandics always look a little, you know, chunky. That's how they're built, they're little trucks. And so you would think they can't move, but boy, can they move, right? They're fun horses. Okay, now we're going to go down that little decline. I do have a professional choice rubber piece underneath my saddle to keep it from sliding. And uh, we'll see how much the saddle slides or not on him. And they sent up a crouper in case I needed it for my saddle, which was very nice. That's the thing that goes under their tail that helps it from sliding forward. So he went down that decline just fine. I have contact on this horse. It's very light. And I did not half halt or anything when I went down the hill. I'm just sitting here right now. I don't have leg on him at all. He's just moving. And that's what happens if I push my hands forward and he has a big loop in the rain. So now we start to go uphill. I'm gonna start to gate him a little bit, see how he gates out here. So he only required light leg. So he might be good for someone who's not real strong in their legs. Usually I think of beginner horses as dull, you know, more woe than go. Even though he's not spooky or anything, he does move out, so more like someone who might be starting riding, but they like to move out. They're not super afraid because otherwise, again, them just moving out could make you scared. Then you clamp on, which puts leg on the horse, which makes them go faster. You get more scared, and then you clamp on, put more leg on, it makes them go even faster. And then all of a sudden the horse is bolting because they're petrified of you. So horses that are sensitive, you want to keep your legs kind of off and then just apply light pressure when you need them to keep going. Oh, super fun gates, very, very smooth. That was good. And he didn't get amped up. Now he's back to normal. I might talk or give more advice at the end with this one. Just because there's new people interested in them, so I just kind of want to describe them. So let's stop him. Whoa. Let's see if he stands. I'm letting go. The reason I'm pushing my hands for it, I don't know him. So I want him on a loose rein, but I want my reins there. Do not eat the poison ivy. Okay. Poison oak, sorry. But he stood very well. He didn't get amped up. He didn't act like he wanted to run home or anything. So at least his worth at work Ethics seems very, very good. He's probably like, who are you talking to? This lady's a nut. I'm talking to my other personalities. That's who I'm talking to. <laughs> Maybe Cousin Esther's with us. Cousin Esther hasn't been around in a while because I've been so busy. I haven't had time to make goofy instructional videos, but she'll come back in time. All right, so we're going to add just a little leg. To me, it's just a very light pressure. Again, my legs are stronger than I know because I ride so many horses a day. So to you, it might be a little bit of harder pressure. But that was good. He went up and came back down. So let's just, because now I can seem to know him better, so I'm just going to drop the reins. 
Now you might like to ride like this. I don't like to ride like this because you got no reins. In case something bad happens, you can, uh, you know, at least I'm not that quick anymore. So I test them like this, but I don't recommend it until the horse is more and more tired and you're sure nothing's going to pop out and scare them. But he did well. He didn't change his speed at all. Going downhill now. The hills never look like they are on these videos, just so you know. So everything's always steeper than it looks. So perfect. Very smooth, not jarring. He didn't pace, he didn't get trotty. Stayed right in his little flat wall. Okay, so now we got the big hill. But I believe he's not going to have a problem at all just because of what I felt leaving the barn. He got up that one really well. I'm just going to let him go where he's going. He's picking the trail. And people always remember getting your half seat going up really steep hills like that help the horse. I see so many people in the video, sale videos, trainers leaning back while the horse is trying to get him up the hill. That's not very nice. Help him. So he did that perfectly, not a problem. When you see me on him, I'm 5'5". Five five. He's 14 hands. But again, I have videos of big people riding them, like 6'2 on them. He didn't have any problems with them. Right? So he keeps his head pretty straight. You saw he just looked over to the right. There's farmland over there. That's what he's looking at. He's like, look at the view. But he's otherwise, he's not wobbly. You know, some gated horses wobble all over the place and you gotta hold him straight. He holds himself pretty straight. And so far my saddle's doing good going down these hills. We'll find out when we go the other way because then it's very steep coming back down. I rode my bike by him this morning, hiking sticks, was playing with the dogs, I'll post video of that. And he did good with all of it. I don't know if he's seen it before because he kind of looked like, what are you doing? But he didn't do anything bad. And he could have because he was in his stall and that's a good test. Like if they're scared, they run away. I like to show the speeds they go because only you know. What speed do you want to go? If you want to go this slow, like quarter horse slow, that this is not the horse. This is not the horse, of course. Okay, going uphill again. This isn't as big. I asked him if they had nervous people on him and what he did, like did he handle it okay or did it make him really nervous and did he get antsy and they said no, he did fine, he said he did walk out just like I was talking about and they said but he didn't react to them or get faster or do anything bad with them. Now we're going up the last hill before we get up to those water tanks. He feels very comfortable. He does not feel nervous. He doesn't feel like he's going to spook. Oh, I asked him, like, has he ever spooked with you guys? Because they've had him for two years and have had beginners and their friends on him and stuff like that. And they said no. Not that they remember. He hasn't really spooked. Yesterday when I went by the goats, he took a wide berth. So that means he just kind of veered off to get farther away from them. But he did not spook. I took him by some stallions in their paddocks. He did fine with that. And then saw some other goats and he was fine with that. So he looks at stuff. He'll be cautious. So I don't think he's a total like deadhead. Like I was talking about in the other videos when I was describing horses that people need in that Rocky Mountain Horses video. So this might be good for someone who's kind of a good rider, decent rider, lost their confidence and they just need to work it back because once you trust him, he'd be a fun horse. Or somebody who is a beginner but motivated to learn and is not too scared to move out some, like you like a little speed, maybe you're athletic. Or you've been riding all your life and you've lost some of your 
confidence, but you think with the right horse you'll get it back. If you give it time, this guy might be the one for you. I thought the way he was described in the auction video and uh, how they had it described him to me, I thought he was going to be more of a deadhead horse. You know, because they had, they had said beginner and all this stuff on it, but now I think it's a different kind of beginner. So again, I think you could put beginners on him if he was your horse and he would pack them around and then you could have fun riding them or you could pony your kids and then once they got confident, you know, then you could let them loose on them. Or if you're nervous, your instructor, your trainer could pony you out on them and then once you feel comfortable, they could let you loose and he'd be fine. It's just getting used to them. So the two horses are up here. You're probably not paying attention to how I'm steering, but he has kept a perfectly straight line without much guidance at all. So we have, which is very nice for gated horses because many of them walk like they're drunk if you don't hold them straight. And he didn't get up here and scream at these horses at all either. So that means usually pretty confident, you don't mind being alone. And I have videos of him riding in big groups. I think they had seven or eight of them. And that was good. Now I kind of just like, oh, well, do you want to go see those horses? I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Gravelly, they put uh, that road base on it. Some horses will slide on this stuff. He is not. He just has shoes in the front and none in the back. He could probably go barefoot if he wasn't going to be on rocks and he and some horses, uh, if their feet are kind of long or really tough, could be fine. But since he's for sale, I don't want to have him go barefoot because he hasn't been barefoot for the past couple of years and chew up his feet. So, so we're going to reshoe him, but he is one that looks like he has good feet and could probably go barefoot. And doing that, I don't think is going to affect his gait because he gates so well. All right, so this is where we turn around. So we're going to stop, see what he does. Just give him a little treat, see if it's good. He's like, oh, oh, yum, yum, yum. <laughs> so he's standing quite good. Good boy. All right, see what happens when we turn around. Looks like, well, that was a pretty easy ride. This ride takes about, I don't know, an hour. That's why you see the videos are usually about 40 minutes. And I kind of turn the video on and off here and there to save my battery. So we turned around. He's engaging himself. He's using his hind end to get up this hill. But you see, he's not high-headed. And a lot of times he has his ears back at me. So remember, I was talking about that other horse and horse language. Watch where his head is. His head's low. Now these horses are right up here on the right. I can see him out of the bush, but I'm sure he can't see him. So let's see if he jumps. Oh, he just looked down. So that makes a lot of the horses jump because they can't see through those trees. And then all of a sudden it's there. And then once they see it's a horse, they go, oh, okay, I'm fine. But he didn't spook at all. But you'll see his head is low, so that's calm. His ears keep coming back towards me more, so that means he's listening to me. They're not perked forward. They go forward, but then they kind of come back, and his head's getting lower and lower. So that just tells me he's confident with his job, he's relaxed, he's not that worried about anything. And he, he's checking in every once in a while, like, hey, you want me to do something? No, nope, just carrying me. That's good enough. A very nice walk. I don't like to go very slow. So, if you like to go very slow, this is not him. That Rocky went really slow. <laughs> and, oh, he's barefoot behind. He's doing fine on these rocks behind. Not an algae or anything. So again, I think you could probably go barefoot. Yeah, there's a lot of barefoot people. Uh, this might be a little endurance horse. Check your resting heart rate, but I think he had a vet exam, so we'll look on that too. Okay, so I'm going to drop the reins. So 
Oh, he's walking out a little bit faster. Now he's slowed back down. Now he's looking around more. Reins are flopping all over. So, very good. Okay, so now I'm going to do some other stuff. I'm touching my hat. I'm moving my arms around up here. You saw in the video, they were playing like basketball off of him. So he's not upset with this stuff. Hat and uh, touching him behind. All that stuff's fine. Didn't look at these. All good. I am riding him in a Crestridge Sentry. So far, so good. Some of the Icelandics are hard to fit because they're such uh, round horses. Uh, the previous owners rode them in a crest ridge also, so they said their saddle did quite well. It wasn't really slipping. Okay, so now we're going downhill. So he's slowing down. He's rocking back on his back end. I'm not half halting and helping him. I'm just sitting here like a big slug. Yep. He just adjusted himself the whole way. Head's getting lower. See, it's nice when people like describe stuff like this on the sale videos. They don't tell you anything. <laughs> but I'm always trying to make a match. I don't want the horses to just sold and make money and then they get passed around five more times. That's that's quite sad. And people think the horses are bad because they get passed around five times. Can be. But it's usually because it's just the wrong match. We're all different and the horses all are all different. So I like to describe them and then you think, well, yeah, can I handle that? Yeah, I think so. Do I have help? Yeah, I got help. She said I might need help. Yeah, good. I got this. So it has a little dip right here before it goes down. We handle that. Uh, yesterday I rode him in the arena. We did his tolt and we did his canter. Very, very smooth and his flat walk. And then if you want him to trot, you can put him into a trot in there. Out here, he has not gone into a trot at all. So he is one that you could trot though if you were doing endurance and you're looking for more gates in case the horse gets tired. I don't know if there's a lot of Icelandics in endurance because I don't do endurance. So you might be laughing at me like, you're an idiot, gay. Icelandics don't do endurance. I'm just thinking he's got lots of gates, he's pretty mellow, but he moves out and he's smooth. That's what I'd be looking for. <laughs> but you might be looking to win and you're like, that's not going to win. Or maybe it would. <laughs> Alright, so we got a hill to go up. So again, I pushed him, well, I kept him going on the way out. He kind of went himself, so I'm just going to see what he does up this hill. On the other hills, he kind of engaged himself and started driving and pushing. And that's what he's doing right now. Yeah. Still very, very smooth. And it bounced once. So, so far, I really like him because I don't have to do much except steer. And talk to you. That's pretty easy. Might as well see some of the scenery. So, I guess we'll ride him with one hand and see how he does. Now this hill is hard. It's steep and it's like you're not steering. <laughs> uh, it's steep. It's deep like footing. And a lot of horses slide down this when I take them to it. Now, there's a tree over here. That's why I moved them over. Because horses don't know that your head's going to smack the tree. So you steer them. You just let them steer under trees. They're going to hit you into something. So handle that really well. Saddle didn't move. I like these little professional choice things. It's not a big rubber thing. So he's still got, you know, the wool pad to absorb his sweat. But it's holding it. And those are steep. Like if I don't need any 
I mean, the croupers work well, but if I don't gotta stick something up his butt, why would I? <laughs> okay, so just one hand in it now. Now, even though his head's low, you notice what he's not doing? He's not a grass grabber. At least not here. It's not green grass, but if they're a grass grabber, they still usually grab all this cruddy stuff. So, he's not a spoiled little brat, huh? Remember, with the grass grabbers, I have that article I can send you, but also, don't let them start. Many horses don't start like that. And people let them. They have the reins too long, and so they can put their head down that much, and then they can uh, grab the grass. You know, if they do that immediately, if you're going to be riding with the grass, put a muzzle on them or start giving them jobs every time they do that and cut that stuff out. But if you let them be a grass grabber for a month or four months or six months, you got a problem. Then it's, it already knows it can yank its head down and create a big problem. You might have to put an overcheck or something on it so it can't get its head down. Okay, so we're going to stop. Well, because we're headed home. I'm going to let go of them. Do you want to run home? He's like, no, he told me about you. Good boy. So very calm. And look, started back off slowly. Now, they, when they sent him in, they also sent in another horse for um, training, a young horse. And so she's there. It's a mare. And again, what happens? Gildings get attached to mares. We left. He didn't scream to her. He didn't care. And he's not trying to run home to her. So that's a horse he knows. So that says a lot about like not being buddy sour. Of course, you can make a buddy sour, but at least he's not buddy sour now, and he's not buddy sour. He's papered. You could show him because he gates so well. When I hit all those branches when I came out, I don't remember if the video was on, and he was fine with all that. And he's not cheap. Icelandics are not cheap horses. And, uh, would I say he's worth it? Yeah, I would say he's worth it. So, he's taking pretty good care of me. I'm not doing much at all up here. So, you want to have fun, feel safe. Not a short horse. or I think he could carry that. The guys who had him, they're over 200 pounds. He carried them just fine. in the deep sand. So we used to ride with two hands. It's hard for me to ride with one sometimes. You see his head's still low. His ears move around some. But pretty darn mellow. Well, so they said he hasn't had any like major medical issues, no lameness, his legs are quite clean. And uh, he's sound, he's sure footed, he's safe, he's just not super slow. We rode him in Iceland because they usually move out there, you'd like this one. I forgot I was going to start giving you advice on the way home. So, I'll tell you some advice. Hey, you own your own horse and you're going trail, uh, trail ride, right? And you're on vacation. When I go, everybody starts telling the people that I'm a trainer, I ride really well, I'm experienced. And I go, no, 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 they're lying. No, I don't. I'm a beginner. And they go, what? They just said, I go, no, 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 I'm a beginner. And then all my clients go, why did you do that? And I go, because I'm on vacation. I'm paying to ride this horse. I'm not paying to ride, train someone else's horse. If you, they think I'm a trainer or I'm an experienced rider, you know what they're going to give me? Something harder. Something faster. And if these horses aren't gated, I don't want to go fast. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. I want to just walk, play on my phone, and be a passenger. Because I have to ride all the time. So when you go to a trail place... Even if you ride well, unless you want to go fast, that's different. But if you want to just hang out and have a good time, 
You tell them you're a beginner. I'm not embarrassed to do that. I'm like, I'm a beginner. Mm -hmm. Give me, give me the plug over there. That's the one I'll take. <laughs> so I always laugh when I tell people that because they're like, I'm not, I don't ride so well. And I always tell them I'm experienced. I go, oh yeah, have you ever fallen off any of those horses at the trail place? Oh yeah, I ended up in the hospital. I go, that's fine. One lady told me she went to Iceland and said she was, you know, a really good rider. And they gave her a stallion. That stallion bucked her off the first day she was in the hospital the rest of her trip. That's why I don't do things like that. I'm like, no, beginner, give me the plug. Especially when you're paying to ride someone else's horse. You can't ride it to end up in the hospital. All right. So now here's the turn for the trail. You could either go left or right. We came up to the right. Let's see if he chooses the right. Look how smart this horse is. He could have went left and he's like, no, she came this way. I'm going to go this way home. So that's good. He's got a good trail map in his head in case you get lost. He knows where he came from. And you might not know it. You know, your horse poops on the trail when they're nervous. They poop for different reasons. But do you know what it also does? It marks the trail, helps them find their way home. But they also have a, a sense for home. You know, that's why horses, you know, will, when you turn and you turn towards home, even if you're five miles away, the horse gets faster. So I tell people, if you're lost, just keep going down different trails. And when your horse speeds up, that's the way home. If your horse, you know, goes down the trail and it's not going, oh, sorry, I should have steered you over that. Um, then, it's uh, probably not the right way home, or they'll keep getting slower and slower. This is the hard part. I'm, let, I'm gonna let him drop his head all the way down. It's harder for him because my feet are hitting this because he's short. <laughs> but he did good. Um, so now some of your horses don't have that map as well in their head and can't find home as well. I've been with horses we've let lead and they got us lost and then I just get my horse in front and go, go, take us home. And they get us home. So I don't like when horses are barn sour, but I always leave just a little bit, something in there in case we ever get lost that they will get us back. Because I don't want them so like, I, I, can't, I don't want to go home at all because then we won't find our way home. Okay, so we're going to come out and see the barn. We'll see if he screams or does anything. Slowing down, not speeding up. It's like that's the end of the ride. Well, that wasn't much. So now we got a bigger step down right here. I'm going to let it go. Did good. Now this one, I'm going to drop the reins and see what he does. Very sure footed guy. So once I get back, I'm going to go in the arena and I'll show you what he's like in the arena. So if you have a horse and he is faster in the arena because he hasn't done it, that's why I took him out on the trail first instead of doing the reverse. So one, in case he was barn sour or something, I wanted to go back and work in the arena. Two, he'll be a little bit more relaxed when I get in there because now he's worked some of his energy off. And so it'll help him be more relaxed instead of nervous in there. He still might be nervous. It'll just help me. And uh, so that's why I chose to do it this way. Now he's stopping. He's not going to the bathroom. He's just checking out something. Now it might be the scarecrows moving around up there through the trees. Because his head was turned to the left. That means usually they're looking with their right eye. So now he's getting a little faster. Oh. The other thing it is, there's a sprinkler going off over there. I don't know if you can see that. So that might have made him just a little bit more nervous because I hear him breathing. And you should notice those things. So why would they breathe harder? Because he's trying to smell what it is. So the scarecrow's right here. I'm gonna hit the trees. And there's a little sprinkler water that he just veered around. And that's what he did with the goats. There's the thing. So it is the sprinkler. The sprinklers are setting off in the middle. They must have broke. And uh, so 
all it did was make him go a little faster. He's probably never ever seen that in his life. There's lots of horses have not seen sprinklers. Well, he was looking and with his left eye. So that's the hard thing is, you know, because their eyes are on the side of their head, figure out what it is it that they're looking at. All right, so we're just gonna go by the horses. So I'm gonna save a little of this to. Uh, oh, 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 I'll show you one more thing before I shut this off. So we do. I'm gonna post this horse. Uh, Terry has this gray mule. It is the cutest thing I've ever seen. It's a Molly mule, so it's a girl. She's got flies. I have to come out and spray her. So he's gone away, so I said, let me sell her because she's the cutest thing. She goes slow. She is not gated. She wants trucks canter. He's ridden around a loose rein, no hands. I had him send me all the videos, so I'll make a video. But she would be a great beginner one or for kids. Uh, they used her on some of those uh, trail pack trips they go on. And uh, they had her packed up with a whole bunch of stuff. People don't know how to ride and she packed them all around. So that might be one if you'd like to go slow because her walk is slow. And uh, if you're not going to gate much, well, you just keep her slow and you can teach her to do a jog if she doesn't know how. And that would be a good one. And you'll have the coolest looking mule. She's not big. I think she's 14, one or two. I'll measure her. Okay, so his little girlfriend is kind of straight across from us and to the right. I'm going to see if he knows how to open gates. A lot of the horses from Kentucky and stuff. He's like, no, I'm not going over the gate. Uh, don't know how to open gates because they don't have a lot. So he didn't freak out at it, but he didn't want to get closer to it, so he probably doesn't know how to open gates. There we go. All right, so let's walk around. So this is much slower than when I came in the arena yesterday. There's my new pirate flag. Put flags up, people. Get them used to. Your horse is used to it. So, because when I came in yesterday, I mean, he had just arrived. He had a couple hours off, and then I brought him in here to see. He walked much faster. So, I'm just going to see how he does. So sometimes people, you know, we're trying to make them be in the arena. They haven't been in the arena. We're having major difficulties. You're doing a thousand of those one rain stops that Gay told you to do, and they're not working. You're like, no, he's not coming down. We'll go take a trail ride first, then bring him in the arena and do the same stuff. But this is much more relaxed. Now, again, he might get faster every time we get over there, because that's where his girlfriend or sister, whatever he, your relationship is with her. Uh, but overall quite good all right so now i'm gonna speed him up a little bit i get bored and i'm gonna test him a little bit more and i'll put you back on let's do poles can you do poles this is my circle of poles it's great being here because when i was at the boarding stables i had to always pick all my stuff up now i can leave it and then we have a jump here. Usually for good trail horses, they're fine going over stuff, but we'll see. Oh, and he's not big. He went over that just fine. Do a little leg yield. Then all this stuff is going to get better because he just arrived. That's why I have everybody send the horses in to put training on so I can fix whatever little things they have or the big things. He doesn't have anything big so far. But so I always like to put more training on and make sure so I can trailer him out and take him places so I know better so we find the right match. So even if you put a, like a deposit to hold him, I'm gonna continue to ride him. It's not like I stop riding them. Let's cut across so we do our leg yield faster. 
because some people as soon as you put a deposit on the horse just sits there they don't touch it again and you buy it and then take it home and it has no more training i always like to put more training on because it's all about making a match and trying to help the horse have a permanent home and not be passed around and i do ha i always wear spurs and I touched him with it. He did not freak out because I like to make sure they're not going to buck or something if somebody puts a spur on them. Isn't that nice to know? <laughs> so he's only going to be better than he is now. But on trail, I think he did spectacular. But I'll take him to the beach and his places so we see how he does with everything. But I think he's going to be just fine. And then we're going to fix this stuff. I side passed him yesterday. He didn't do so well. But at least he had an idea how to side pass. So we'll see how he does today. All right, so his leg yields were good. Let's stop him back up. Oh, boy. So decent back up, but we're gonna make that much better. I did that, uh, judge that horse show. It was super fun. Uh, the biggest problem people had was when we tested them and they had a back up. Many of the horses didn't back up well, and if they did back up, they were crooked. So if you were at the show and you're listening to me talk, practice your back up six times a day, every time you ride your horse, and learn how to steer backwards so they back up straight. Because someday, you just might need it on the trail when you're on a single track and there's a big tree down. You don't want to go off a cliff trying to back up and turn around. And that's what your turn on the forehand helps you with too is when you're on a single track it's very easy to turn your horse around when they know how to do a turn on the forehand or turn on the haunches you can help them and you can do half of each one so i'm gonna back up the oh boy and we're gonna do our turn on the forehand he did know how to do this let's do our circle pulls again and if you don't watch my videos you might be like why is she doing a circle of pulls I, I've done this for, I don't know, over 20 years, I'm that old. And uh, the reason I do poles with gated horses is because some are not sure-footed. It's a good way to test them. Some do not have good proprioception. They do not know where their feet are. It can be because, you know, they have EPM, but it can be also because they're wired different or they're clumsy or they just, nobody's taught them. And for some, it's natural. They're athletic and very sure-footed. And for some, especially the PC ones, they're not athletic and they're not, um, they don't have good proprioception. That PCness does something. So when they're PC and lazy, that can make a tripper. When they're PC and spirited, that's usually not a tripper because they got, you know, they got some jumpiness in them. So if they stumble, which the, any horse can stumble, if they stumble, they usually catch themselves quite well. But if you have a PC one that's lazy and it stumbles, sometimes it trips and then it falls and it sits there and goes, what do you want to do now? <laughs> You're like, what, is it? what do I want to do now? I want to get up because it fell off. But so when you're testing them for sure fittedness, you got to test that stuff. So I'm going to stop and back up again. So remember, I said six times. That's number four. Um, see, and it's getting much better already, but lots of people don't back their horses up when they ride. So I try to do it all the time so they get really good at it. And even if I make them good, if you never practice it, guess what? They'll do it, but they're not going to do it well. So just practice it. It's really not that hard. The flag blowing, his friends. So you're trying to test them with the poles because the poles will help them be more sure-footed. And it's also a good test if you're like... You know what? I've been doing those pulls for a month. He's no better today than he was a month ago. Well, that might be a horse with a problem. Either he might have EPM. And remember, EPM's a blood test, but then you got to do a spinal to really prove it. And if you got a tripper, I would do the spinal. Because that's the only way to really prove it. And tripping is dangerous. So you want to find the real problem. What if he really doesn't have it and you treat him for EPM and you think he's fine and that's not what he had at all. So do the spinal. That's my recommendation. And then uh, if they're tripping, you got to think of other things. Like maybe he has arthritis in his neck. Maybe he's got navicular in his feet. Maybe he has ring bones. So 
the next cheapest thing to do would be to x-ray the feet and that's usually where I start because if they have something in the feet that's something you can work on immediately and it's cheaper than like the whole EPM testing because I think the spinals are now a thousand dollars so x-rays are usually a couple hundred bucks and you're like oh he has navicular that's a shoeing problem oh he has ring bone oh. I don't know how long we're going to be able to ride them. We can shoot them for a bit and then we're going to have to retire them. So it's good to see what's in their feet. We x-rayed one of our horses the other day because she was a little off. And we found out her shoeing was wrong for the angle of her bones inside. She didn't have anything wrong with her bones. It was just wrong shoeing. So we shoot her. Guess what? She's fine now. So x-rays of the front feet are good money spent to help you. Well, we're going to go backwards again and off we go again so his backup's getting much better going to do one more and another turn on the forehand i will get video of his gates so you can see just not today again he just arrived another turn on the forehand now to the left he's like no i don't like doing it that much sometimes people have only taught them to do that turn one direction. I find that a, a lot from the Midwest. Maybe there's a point to it, but I like him to turn both. So he's going to learn that better. And let's show you his side pass now. Yesterday I did it in front of the fence and that was not so good. So he's like, back up? No. So he don't know. So let's go to the fence. Let's try it with the fence in front of you. Fence blocks their forward motion. Yep, and that's probably where they were doing it because now he's figured it out. So not great, that'll be much better. Some of you don't care about side passing, but I do because he's like, I'm confused, lady. I, I do because I have to open the gates up. And when you ask him, see he's backing up, he's confused, that's okay. You don't stop asking till they take that step sideways and that's what he just did. Because otherwise, if you stop when they're backing up, then they think that's the cue for backing up. And you just taught them the side pass cue means backing up. Yeah. So let's try it again. And that's why you can teach them so fast if you have good timing, because you release when they're doing the right thing, not the wrong thing. So see, he's backing up. There we go. One step sideways. Good boy. So this is not, or probably in a week, it's going to be much better. Good boy. But again, I spent hours with these horses doing lots of stuff. So now that was good. So now I'm going to go the other way. He might be confused because that's what happens. Yeah, he's a little confused. That's okay. Because again, the other thing I'm seeing, do they have temper tantrums? Because some do. Good boy. And it's nice for me to go, yeah, it's a great horse, but he has temper tantrums. Can you handle that? Nice to know ahead of time. And it's nice to know what sets them off. So you know. So he's trying much more than he did yesterday. He is a pony. Ponies can be stubborn. Good boy. But he did it. And this is much, much better than yesterday. He's crooked. One thing at a time. We don't care that he's crooked. Okay, one more step. Good boy. Oh. One more job for you. He's like, hold. Oh. Hey, at least I didn't take you on a six hour ride. So I forgot to walk around the barn. So let's walk around the barn. The bag is in the gate right now. Now see how I can't get so close to the gate? If he could side pass, but I'm not gonna ask him to side pass here because he already just did it and he's learning. See why that backup's important. Now there he just flinched. That's because I almost hit him in the face. I would flinch too. Okay. So now we were very close to his girlfriend. Now we're going away from her again. This is a long video and lots of the sale horses uh, when you see the videos of me riding them with the GoPro, they are long. When you buy that horse, you should go back and look at it. Every month, go back and look, because I say stuff and you won't hear it the first time. You won't hear it the second time. You might not hear it on the fifth time, but at some point you'll be like, oh my God, she did tell me that, didn't she? 
tell you as much as I know, but it only works if you listen. And I know I talk a lot, so I'm going to have to be like, I can only take gay in spurts, so I'm going to win it today. Every day till I know everything about that horse. Okay. So we got the dogs up here. He did pretty good with them. And he did good with my boxer, jumping around, chasing the bag this morning. Okay, no dogs. <laughs> I'm testing with that. And what else? The goats aren't out. There's a horse. He wasn't there yesterday. Oh, well, this is the spooky part of the barn. Everybody spooks. He was good yesterday going through here. He didn't spook at anything. And there's a little umbrella. I already tested him with umbrellas. Oh. So we're going to get off here because um, there's nothing else going on. I'm done riding him and I uh, want to get off away from his friend. Try not to get off at the barn. Lots of you do that. Get off somewhere else, walk a little bit, get some exercise, lose some weight. And if you loosen the girth, which I'm going to do because I like to do that away from the barn, hook it again just looser so it does not fall underneath your horse because that's the other thing I see people do. I go, no, loosen it, but hook it again. Okay, he's round, so I'm just adjusting everything. And there is the cutest ice land. <laughs> it's pretty straight-legged. Doesn't do anything funky that I'm seeing with his legs. So overall, great horse, sure-footed, safe, sound, moves out some. So it's got to be someone who likes to move out a little bit. Uh, the, he doesn't go, it's not super, super fast. It just feels like he's moving because he's got a shorter stride than like a, you ride with a walking horse. He might have to gate the whole time and gate pretty fast to keep up with it, but he could, probably could do it. And so if you want to go quarter horse slow, I'd say no. But if you like to move out a little bit and you're riding with quarter horses that will trot or they have a bigger stride like an appendix quarter horse, probably be fine. And he hasn't been spooky. He's quite good. He's very respectful back there. He's not trying to run over the top of me, and I think he's just a good pony, but if you're petrified, that little bit of speed might scare you. But this would this would be a good beginner horse for someone to then move up. Like he would, you could be a beginner, have someone helping you, and then once you're better, you'll have more speed, and he's going to be quite good. Instead of having like a real dud that's a beginner, and then you're like, now I want to move out, now i got to sell this horse and get another one. So... That's what I think he is.